Good morning, this is Phoenix1987, 20 here to bring you the latest episode on my Let's Talk About series. And today, I'm going to go into a different direction. I'm going to talk about the Xbox and how Xbox winning the case against Sony with Activision was good, but also at the same time, very, very, very bad for business. Xbox getting it. And so making those deals with both Sony and Nintendo that Call of Duty will be coming, will continue to come out for those consoles. Even though Call of Duty hasn't come out for Nintendo console since the Call of Duty Ghost on the Nintendo Switch. On oh, Nintendo Switch, the Nintendo Wii U. That's how long ago. So there's been multiple Call of Duties out since then that hasn't. But that's besides the point. Sony, they, they they fucked up because they had a better deal. They turned it down. Now they got a shitty deal and they got to live with it. Sucks to be, eh, you, know, you know what I mean? Sony, but that's besides the point. Xbox just won this great big Activision deal. And so to celebrate, they did something that not a lot of companies thought they would do. They went and turned on all the Call of Duty servers there was. They upgraded that shit and they turned it on. So you got a lot of the good old classic Call of Duty games on the Xbox now. And guarantee their revenue's going up. Games are pretty decent. I think I paid I think 30, uh, $45 because I accidentally bought a season pass instead of the actual game. But uh, in Canada, they're like $15 a piece. So that's not expensive at all. That's actually pretty pretty good. But I'm just thinking about it. In the long run, they got a Call of Duty game that's going to be brand new coming out here. Here soon. Now, will it do as great as the numbers as it should? Or, I don't know. Would it do great numbers? Because you're, I'm going on at any Call of Duty server there is. That old school from the th Xbox 360 all the way up up to now. And, like, my jam was always Black Ops 1 and 2. And I'm getting, like, I'm jumping into games. Quick, quick, quick. Because it's so quick. But will that the, will that hurt Xbox overall in the long run? Or will Xbox be totally fine? And this will pan out because PlayStation characters... Uh, not characters. Gamers will eat it up because... There are certain PlayStation people that all they ever buy is Call of Duty games. So, will that be enough to keep their head revenue with this? Or will they push for every every Call of Duty server out there to be turned on? Will they allow Sony and potentially Nintendo to jump on these? Which would make awesome sense, awesome sense for Nintendo... Especially for Nintendo, if they got the older ports on there, they just turned on all all the servers for them. Why can't they go be like, "Yo, Black Ops One and Two out for the Nintendo Switch"? You get more people on there, and you get a higher revenue. If they're gonna push these older games, which a lot of people are loving right now, because a lot of the old Call of Duty games were better than the new Call of Duty games. The only thing that might be better, you know, might be better, is if you're a campaign person. If you're not a campaign person, well, it sucks to be you. But did did Microsoft do the right thing about it? Now, I think they did, but they gotta have to reinvent the wheel a bit. Yes, they know that the they they dead last in the console wars, and Sony and Nintendo has been fighting it out since '92, since the deal went sour. But again, it's funny because if it wasn't for Nintendo, Sony wouldn't have been there. If it wasn't for Nintendo, Xbox wasn't there. See, Xbox, and Microsoft, they tried to save Sega and they failed. But Activision, I mean, Activision has a lot and a lot of games underneath it. Now, it will hurt Xbox if they make a lot of that Activision games just solely exclusives. Now, timed exclusive, that's different. That's different than exclusive only, like, for Sony and Nintendo. You won't, you won't see Mario game or Spider-Man game on a different console unless they get permission to. Now, at one point, Spider-Man was cross-platform. 
And everybody's going to say, no, it wasn't. No, Spider-Man at one point was cross-platform even when Sony did own it. Well, Sony still owns it. But maybe we may one day see Spider-Man across all consoles again. I don't know. But exclusives are fun. But as long, but if you have a big third-party company that you now own, those games that the, the third-party company has built up, those games can't be exclusive per per console exclusive. It will never, ever, ever, ever work. But it, if it's, I don't know, if it's a time exclusive, like two months, time exclusive. Now, that's different than, than what people think it is. And I'm waiting to see what the big overall scheme of things is going to be with this. Will Xbox actually start making waves? Or will they sit in third place for the rest of their lives and eventually have to, I doubt they will ever have to, but have to start liquidating stuff, cutting back on staff just to keep the Xbox brand going? Or will they be stronger than our, stronger than ever and throw punches back at Sony? Because, you know, Nintendo, they like to do a lot of dance and they dance around their opponents and it's what they're good at. And they still sell consoles and games and software. Right now, they're winning the console war. And unless a lot of haters are going to hate me. But they are they are winning the console wars. And I'm just going to stick with that right now. Because you're going to have to follow my console war um, chat down the road later on when I do a video for that. Until there, think about it. Did Xbox win or did Xbox truly lose? On paper, they won. But did they took? But did they actually lose? Yo, drop that in the comments. Till then, I'm saying peace, enjoy yourself, fuckers, and have a good day.